Welcome to Photography BB's Artistry Actions for Photoshop. In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate our Shockwave Photoshop action. Now this action is perfect for portrait photographs and still life photographs as well. You'll find it to be especially useful on edgy portrait photographs, photographs of athletes, uh, models, even wedding photography as well. And you'll find this especially useful in still life photographs too. Let's have a look at the effect and how it works. So the first step is to obviously install the action into Photoshop. And if you're not familiar with how to install actions into Photoshop, we do have a separate video tutorial that demonstrates how you can install actions, brushes, and patterns into Photoshop. So I would highly recommend checking out that video tutorial. Now, once you have installed the action, it's going to appear inside the actions panel. So to access that, we go up to the menu window actions. And we are looking for Photography BB Shockwave CC. Now we do have two versions of this action, as you can see here. We have a CC version and a CS6 version. And that's primarily because we're making use of a brand new feature in Photoshop 2021 that automatically can select a subject for you. Now in the past, we've had to do this manually, which could be a painstaking process in some cases. Uh, but we do have that feature now in CC 2021 and newer, where Photoshop can automatically detect a subject and select it for us. So that's why we have these two separate versions here. So if you are using an older version of Photoshop, if you toggle open the CS6 version of Shockwave, we have a step one and step two, just like our other actions have in the past, where step one is selecting the main subject. So if you click on step one and click play, you're going to be prompted to paint over your main subject using a brush that is set to opacity 100% and flow as well. Now that's really important whether you're using the manual subject selection method right now or even when you're using the automatic subject selection method. You're going to want the brush opacity and flow to be 100%. So if we click continue, you can select your subject manually by painting over the subject and you do want to be as precise as possible. So once you have selected your main subject completely, then you would run the step two version of the action and that will produce the effect. Now, since we're going to demonstrate the brand new feature in CC 2021, I'm going to remove that subject selection. I'm going to remove this layer that was created by the step one action as well. So we're going back to just the main image here. And we'll toggle open uh, Photography VB Shockwave CC version. And you'll see we have a one click version, which is right here. And we have also included the manual subject selection, just in case you have a situation where Photoshop isn't able to pick out your main subject from maybe a more complicated background. So here we go. Let's go with the one click version right here. Just gonna select that to make sure it's highlighted in the actions panel, Shockwave Auto, and click play. And let's watch the magic happen. Now, depending on the speed and specifications of your computer, this effect may take a few minutes to run. Okay, so that action is complete. And we will just close up the congratulatory message here. And I'm going to close the actions panel out of the way. And here's the effect that we have. So let's zoom out a little bit. We'll go to 40%. Here we go. So here's our final effect, and there's a lot we can do with this still. So it is intended to be a one-click action, but we can customize a lot of things using the various layers that we have here. Now, depending on your version of Photoshop as well, you may find that some of these layers are toggled open, leaving a big giant mess of layers like this. So if that is the case, you'll want to hold down two keys. On a Mac, it's Option and Command. On a PC, it's Alt and Control. You hold down those two keys and you'll click on the little toggle arrow of the top layer here, and that will tidy everything up nicely for you here. So we are going to toggle these open and go through them one at a time, but it's nice to just start with a tidy layer stack like this. So let's go in to the shockwave layers, and those are obviously going to control this effect around the outside of the subject. Main subject layers are going to control the effect on the actual subject, and the background layers allow us to make some choices with the background color here as well. So let's toggle this open. And the first layer control that we have 
are the halftone lines. Now you may be able to see that here, but let's zoom in just so we can have a closer look at this line pattern that's coming out of the shockwave effect here. Now we do have some control over this and it's very easy. All we need to do is toggle open the effects, layer effects uh, toggle right here. And we have a filter on the, uh, the layer. So we double click on filter gallery. That opens this halftone line pattern that we're seeing right now. So there's a couple things we could do. We could decrease the size like this of the pattern or increase it depending on your image. So I find that around three looks really nice as well. So you'll see it just changes it to a more fine line. We can also increase the opacity of this layer so we can see the effect more prominently. There we go, like that. We'll double click it again. And we don't actually have to go with a line. If you prefer a dot pattern, we can change it to a dot pattern like this. And again, you can control the size of the dots. Just for the demonstration, let's make them around five. And you'll see we have this nice dot pattern as well. And once again, you can control the strength of that using the opacity slider here. And lastly, if we double click it one more time, we can go with the concentric circle halftone pattern here as well. This one is pretty cool. I like to go down a little lower, maybe three. Click OK. And you'll see if I back off the zoom here, maybe go back to 50%, you can see the effect of these concentric circles. This is kind of a cool one as well. Now, I do happen to prefer the line pattern the most, so I'm going to just switch that back. And go with that. Okay, and we'll keep it there for now. So the next uh, control that we have is the brightness of the shockwave. So we can double click on the adjustment layer icon here, and we can control the brightness by moving it up and down, or we can control the contrast as well. Um, but for the purposes of this, we'll leave them both where they were at zero. And next we have a contrast control, which is a curves adjustment layer. So if we double click that, you can make uh, finer adjustments if you want to control it with a curve as well. You can make a, any contrast adjustments that you like in this manner. So I'll remove those points. And this is one of the most fun adjustment layers to play with is the color of the shockwave. So if we double click this, we can slide the hue slider to choose a different color for the shockwave effect here. So as you can see, we can go with any color we want on the color strip here. We can adjust the saturation or even the brightness of those. So a lot of things we can adjust and control with these layers. Now I'll go back to zero here. Go back to zero here as well. And I'll close that up. So you can have a lot of fun uh, customizing these shockwave layers. Now, if you want to get even more uh, detailed with these, you can go right into the individual layers themselves, which are controlled in the subject split layers here. So if we open this up, we have a left side and a right side, and you can actually control the color separately from these using these color adjustment layers here. So instead of using the shockwave color, which affects all of the layers in the shockwave effect, we can control the left side and the right side separately. So the first thing we need to do is turn on the visibility of this layer. And you can see that we can change the color independently. Now there's some preset colors here already, but if we want to, we can go in, double click the adjustment layer and actually make any adjustment we want to that. So let's go down the spectrum here. Now that's kind of a cool look. Let's actually leave it there. Again, you can adjust the saturation of these colors and the lightness as well. Okay, so yeah, I like that look, that's good. Now I'm going to close up this uh, split group layer again. If you really want to, you can go further into these and see the actual individual split layers and you can control their brightness um, using the opacity slider here. So if this one on the end here, let's just say was a little too faint for you or too bright for you, you can adjust the opacity up or down. So if we go to 100%, you can see it's much brighter. If we go down to maybe here, 15%. It's very, very faint now. So I had it set as a preset around 47. And that gives that nice little effect there that they're kind of fading out. 
So you can get very granular with these if you go further into the layer stack. But I'm going to close all of these up. We're actually finished here with the shockwave layer controls. So I'll toggle that closed. And we can take a quick look at what we have inside the main subject layers. So the first thing we have is the standard adjustments. So again, we have a contrast control layer, which will allow you to control the contrast just in the main subject. So again, we can draw a curve and you can control contrast any way you like in this case. Remove those. Uh, again, subject brightness, we don't need to go into that, but you would double click that and subject color control. Now this subject happened to be in black and white. However, if you did have a subject that was in color, you can go in here and either saturate it or maybe slightly desaturate it and change the, uh, the lightness of just the subject themselves. So not affecting the outside layers. Those would still be in the color that you're choosing. Whatever you do in this color adjustment would only affect the main subject and not these outside effects right here. So we'll toggle that closed. And we have some control over the shadow edging effect. Now it's difficult to notice that effect until we toggle that off. So let's turn off the visibility and you'll see how this is actually our original main subject uh, lighting. But if we turn that back on, we've added some sort of edge shadows around the main subject so that the light from these outside shockwave effects can kind of spill over and uh, envelop the subject a little bit around the edges. So we find that makes it a more realistic look. And you can control the strength of the shadow, again, by double-clicking the adjustment layer and whatever you would like to do in here, if you would like to make them darker, pull that down a little bit and make the sub, uh, shadows a little darker. We'll toggle that closed. And we have our main subject base layers. So toggling that open, we can see we have this is a very subtle effect that we call the subject shift effect. Now, if we zoom in on the subject here, about 100%, it is a black and white subject, but we have this sort of uh, cyan effect on the main subject. And we can control this with this layer here called the subject shift effect. And I just found that it was a very subtle way of bringing some extra depth to the main subject and really finishing off this whole effect um, more cohesively. So if you like it, you can keep it on, uh, you can reduce the opacity, or you can turn it off, and you'll see it removes that from the subject, and the subject now is the way it was. This adds just that extra layer to this effect, and I find that it gives it a, a really nice um, finishing look to the effect. So that's why we've got that there. We do have a uh, sharpen subject layer here, so you can toggle open the layer effects dialog. And if you would like to, you can double click the high pass layer effect here to control the amount of sharpening. Now, two pixels is generally going to be a good amount uh, for most photographs. But if you want to go higher, you can. And it gives it a really sort of grungy look the higher you go. You can see the effect uh, behind this dialog box here on the main subject or if you go less, it affects the sharpening less. So again, I like to use around two pixels for that, but you can play with this as well. And if the sharpening is too strong, you can reduce the opacity of the sharpening layer, and that will sort of soften up the image as well. And to complete the effect, the main subject base layer, subject soft, actually has a sort of motion blur effect that doesn't show up in the sort of center area of the main subject, just around the edges, there's a soft blurring effect uh, and a horizontal blur. So that is where you can control that with the main subject soft layer. And to do that, you would toggle open the motion blur filter here. And you can see the effect when I click on and off that it just gives a little bit of a motion blur. You can strengthen that, of course, by going up higher. And you can see the effect on the main image or go down lower and it's less prominent. Okay, so those are the main subject controls that we have. And lastly, we will go into the background layers. So let's open that up. Now we have a lighting effect, which is difficult to tell when these shockwave layers are on, but it is there in the background. It's very subtle and you do have control over it. So temporarily, I'm going to turn off the shockwave layers 
you can see there's this kind of a pinkish hue coming from around the outer edge of the subject. Now, I will turn on the main uh, shockwave layers again because we want to adjust this seeing how it affects the overall image with the full effect intact. So I'm going to turn that on and we'll go back to this. So this background lighting and lighting control color or color control, this is where we can control the effect of that. So if I double click on the adjustment layer, I can control that pinkish hue that was surrounding the main subject uh, by sliding this over. And you can see there was a very subtle shift there as I went over from pink into the blues. I can go yellow green. Let's go with green just for the sake of argument here. And we can go with a more saturated look, or we can desaturate that a little bit. That's good. And again, we can adjust the brightness of that lighting effect in the background. Might want to go with more saturation if you're doing that. Or we can darken it to make it more subtle and smaller behind the main subject. And we can also, I'm going to just change that back to a, maybe a reddish color here. Uh, we'll toggle that closed. We can also control the size of it um, using the opacity of the background lighting layer. So we can decrease that if we want to. And you'll see in the main subject how it's just removing that background lighting a little bit more. And I actually like it around 75% there. Let's do that. Okay. And lastly, we can control the background color here. So we double click on the solid color adjustment and we can choose an entirely different background color if we want to. Let's go with a really dark green if you want to. And you can pick any color from the swatches here. And just see how it affects maybe even a bright color looks pretty cool in this case too. Okay. So that is our shockwave action. I think you're going to have a lot of fun using this. Uh, you can combine it with other images, other effects, add some text. So I hope you have lots of fun with this action. Uh, once again, thank you for choosing Artistry Actions by Photography BB. And happy Photoshopping.